Hello, this is Dr. Koenig talking to you about trial frame refraction. So uh, before we get started with actually refracting someone, we're going to go ahead and talk about the different adjustments that are actually on your trial frame. So the first one I'm going to talk about, because it's not used too much, is actually the vertex distance. So it's this middle one here. If you look kind of from the back, you can see that it's moving the nose pad forward and backward. So you can use that if you feel like your trial frame is too close or too far away from someone. The next one that I'll talk about, which actually ends up being pretty important, is the height adjuster. So you can see that you can move the height up and down by moving the middle knob here. So the next one that I'll talk about that's also pretty much never used is the axis lock down here. So if you feel like, you know, you can spin this around to change the axis of your lens. If I put a cylinder lens in, you can see how I'm doing this. So you guys know all the cylinder lenses have, if I actually fit on the track, it'll help, won't it? <laughs> so you guys know um, the axis lenses all have marks, right? So you can spin this around to have it at the correct axis. I like to have them all the way up against the, um, up against the edge there so they won't spin around on me. But let's say that your trial frame is kind of old. So you might want to actually lock your axis here by spinning it in. And then now if I, or by tightening it, now if I try to move it, it's a lot more difficult. It won't move if I try to move it like this. Whereas if I unscrew it, I actually can move it if I try to move it like that. So that's what that's for. Obviously this is for spinning the axis because I just talked about it. Um, you want to make sure you actually do get it on on the tracks. So a lot of things that I'll see students do, they'll put the lens in, but they'll put it in like this. Well, I can't even really do it good because, but they'll put it on, on a track that's not like the right track, so it'll be slanted, right? So that actually distorts the amount of astigmatism someone's getting. So anyway, moving on from that. So some other knobs that you need to know are these knobs on the side. So these actually move the, um, the temples up and down. Uh, so these can be useful if you feel like the glasses are loppy jawed, like if one's higher than the other one, you can move these. If you feel like they're sitting too low, sometimes you need to basically adjust the panoscopic tilt, and you can adjust the panoscopic tilt by adjusting these as well. And the last one is adjusting the PDs. So trial frames let you adjust the PDs separately. Um, so you can kind of spin it there and you can see what the numbers are. You can actually use these to measure PDs as well. So with that, I think, oh yeah, and also you can <laughs> make them longer or shorter, but that's pretty obvious. And also there's like a little vertex thing here um, to see how far away your trough frame is from the patient's face. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and give these to Jennifer and I'll have her put these over her ears. I like to hold on to them while the patient's putting them over their ears so that I can tighten them. Um, most patients will find these pretty heavy. Uh, I'll just kind of warn you. So one thing you can do if the patient complains about the weight is you can take a tissue and then fold it and fit it underneath the huh, fit it underneath the little nose piece in there. But you'd make it wider so that it would actually fit underneath kind of like that. But you don't want it to poke my eye. So anyway, moving on from there, um, we'll go ahead and have... Jennifer, read the lowest line that she can read out there, or it might be none of them, and then we'll get started. What can you see? Um, oh. It looks like two squares on the top. Okay. So nothing. How about there? Uh, B. Okay. And then how about there? Um, e. And then, okay, I think that was it. So you can always randomize the letter. Um, ideally, you would like to have more than one letter, but for this demonstration, we're just going to use a Snellen chart and not use a Lea chart or another type of chart. So with that, she's seeing 2200. So that means that um, if she was a theoretical low vision patient, I need to make changes of a total of two diopters in order for her to tell. So the way I like to start this is to do a really easy choice. Um, I either choose the closest flipper I have or I grab the lenses that match. Luckily, this is a plus or minus two and she was at 200, so that works, right? Um, so then I'll bring this over her. I usually check with plus first. So I say, which is more clear, with the lens or without the lens? Without. So she chose without the plus. And then I'll do with the lens or without the lens? With the lens. Okay. So she chose with the lens, so she chose with minus. So really key, <laughs> important step here. Uh, you want to actually put that lens in. You don't want to just check with other lenses you wanna make sure that you put that lens in there. And then go ahead and keep on checking from there. So I go ahead and keep on going more minus. Uh, is it more clear with the lens or without the lens or about the same? Um, there's with, and there's without, pretty close. With the lens is a little clearer, a little it makes clearer. it smaller and darker. Okay, 
And then there's with or without. Without. Yeah, so I always like to double check. When patients have low vision, you do want to check multiple ways. Um, if I make a change that's like two doctors, I like to recheck the vision as well. And that can adjust, for patients that are normally sighted, that can adjust their just noticeable difference. For patients with low vision, that's not as important uh, because they generally will not see it quite as well. So I'm going to kind of move on down a little bit and then see what she can see here. What's the lowest line you can read out there? V, L, and E. Okay. So she got pretty far down there, so I'm going to skip down a little bit. And then what's the lowest line you can read down there? Uh, P, V, I mean K or N, R. Okay, so she got to 2060. So that means that we could actually go down to like a plus or minus 75 from here. And then adjust it even more from there. So which is more clear here with the lens or without it? Without. And with the lens or without it? With. Okay. So instead of adding just a minus 75 in front, we actually want to change the lens to a minus 275 in the back. So that way we don't end up stacking a bunch of lenses that make it even more heavy for the patient. And you can tell it's pretty uh, simple to slip the lens back there. The main key with slipping the lens in the back well while the patient is looking at something is to have the patient close their eyes if you're not used to it. Um, to go ahead and angle the lens away from their eyes so you don't actually poke them in the eye if they did have their eyes open. Um, you want to kind of apply counter pressure against it. And you'll notice every time I put a lens in, I kind of lift the, the trial frame up so that I'm not pushing it and jamming it in their face because they're already going to have a nose print just from how heavy the glasses are. So anyway, with that, <laughs> we'll keep on going. More clear with the lens or without it. About oh, the same. Yeah, about the same. Okay. And then more clear with the lens or without it. About um, the same. A little better with. Just a hair. Pretty okay. close. Mm -hmm. So if it's pretty close, I generally go ahead and move on to checking the cylinder. So with a cylinder, um, with somebody who's seeing like 2050 or 2060, I would do a plus or minus 50 uh, JCC. So I've got that here. Um, your guys' trial kits also come with a plus or minus 1 and a plus or minus 25. Um, and then in the clinic, you'll also see your plus or minus 75. It's not used as much. So having said that, we'll go ahead and move on to the plus or minus 50. So the important thing to remember is that the um, trial frame is basically just like a phoropter. Um, it's just like the old version of a phoropter. So what I like to do is, um, just like you would dial in if you, had, if you started without any astigmatism correction at all, you would dial in a quarter or 50 to check if the patient had cylinder, right? So I'm going to actually put a 50 in, uh, in a, the well here, if that will get it to fit. There we go, got it. These aren't quite uh, perfectly aligned, so. Um, so I'll put it in there and I'll go ahead and make it axis 90. So you can see the little mark there is at 90. So the way that I like to do it is I always like to do power axis power. Um, so if you look at this JCC, I need to probably describe it for a little bit. So the JCC, you see I have this red line vertically here, right? It's got the black line that's horizontal, and then it's got the little white dots. And the white dots correspond to where the handle is. So the red lines correspond to the minus, like the um, adding back to the minus on the, like the P basically on your phoropter. Um, and then the opposite corresponds to the opposite side of that. So let's see. So if I look at the phoropter, if we look at this, the red on the dots corresponds to my red lines. The white on the white dots corresponds to my black lines here. So it's kind of confusing a little bit in that a lot of these have white dots on them themselves. <laughs> but the white dots actually correspond to the little handle or the little flipper here. That's what these correspond to. So Basically, when you set up power, you want it to be on these red lines here, or the black lines here. It has to be on one of those two spots. When you want to check axis, it has to be on one of the white dots. Because it's just like in the phoropter, when you want it to be on the P, um, and you want to have the, the red or something like that over the, over the axis to, to check for power. And then um, with the white dots, you want it to be checking axis. So for that, we'll keep on going. So checking over here, um, I'm going to have you, her look uh, something that's two lines above what she was just able to read. So she was just able to read 2060, so I want her to be looking at the 2080 line. So if I go back, oh, it doesn't, come on, let's go. Huh? Huh? Can you do it? Will it work? Yes, it will. Okay, great. All right, so I'll have her look at a rounded letter that's two lines above that. So looking at that O in the middle of that top line. So looking at that O. 
Is that more clear with the lens, with one, or with two? Two. All right. So she said it was more clear without that cell there. So then I would go ahead and rotate it to axis 135, and then I would check there as well. So more clear with one or two? Two. All right. So she said it was more clear with the red that time, so that means that she accepted it. So since she accepted the power, I'm going to go ahead and switch to axis. More clear with three or four? Three. Okay, so she said three. So three was actually this way. So I'm going to rotate it 15 degrees that way. And then how about five or six? Six. All right, so she said six, which was actually this way because the red line was like that, right? So then now we'll go ahead and do seven or eight or about the same. And there's seven. Seven. Okay, so she said seven, which is still that way. So we're going to rotate that there. And then nine or 10, or pretty close? Nine's a little better. Okay, so she said nine. So at this point, she's already kicked me past 135 before, so she's really like on 136 or so, um, or within a degree, so I would go ahead and stop here and switch back to power. <laughs> so stopping here, we'll go ahead and go on to one, or two. Two. All right, so she wants more power. So uh, you have to memorize where you were, <laughs> so I was at like 136, so I'll take this out here. And then I'm actually going to go up by the entire amount of my JCC. And another thing is too, I'm not going to do this right now, but you really need to have a cleaning cloth to make sure that your lenses are clean and they don't just have giant thumbprints in the middle. And I apologize, Jennifer, it's not standing very good. I'm going to have to do it again. One day, my own trial frames will not be overly used. Okay, there we go. Back to 136 or so. There we go. And then... Uh, another thing you would want to do too, since we increased the power in there by 50, um, she was able to tell uh, differences of 50 before. She was about at like a, a JND of um, plus or minus 50. So I would go ahead and change the lens in the back well here as well. So to do that, remember if you add 50 more cell, uh, or if you add a adapter more cell, you want to add a half more plus. So I went from a 275 to a 225 to compensate for adding minus and the through cell because of uh, spherical equivalence. So anyway, looking out at that O again, let me know if that's more clear with one or two. One. Okay, so she took more. So again, since she, in this case, I'm pretending like she's a low vision patient, I'm not going to make that adjustment every for every quarter. I'm going to make it every time that I go out by a doctor. I'm not going to make it every time I go out by 50. I'm going to make it every time I go out by a doctor. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'll put this in here. Uh, except I forgot that it was bad again. <laughs> I got too used to that. So see, I did the thing where you put it in and it's like crooked again. I just acted like that was hard to do, but it's actually pretty easy. There you go. Okay. So then looking out there again. Let me know if it's more clear with one or two. One. Okay, so she wanted a little bit more again. So we'll keep going there. Going up to minus two. Ooh. Got it. Also, apologies for the surround noise a little bit. I'm going to move this in the back again. Again, I changed by a doctor, so I'm going to change the back well by half. So I just changed it to minus 175. And yep, we're lined up there again. And then now, more clear with one or two. two. Sorry about that. Okay, so two. So she kicked me back a little bit. So here, I would go halfway in between. Huh. And that would be, huh. almost dropped it. That's fine, too. Try not to drop your lenses, folks. Okay. Also, try not to, do not, please do not touch the lens in the center of the lens. That just like, it's so bad. You're just making it super blurry right before the patient's looking through it. All right, and then there's one or two or about the same. Mm, about the there's same. Two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're about the same. So we're good there. Um, we changed by a decent amount, so you could at least theoretically recheck the axis if you wanted to. Um, but we'll move on from there because you guys kind of get the, get the picture. So from there, what we would do is I think that the final answer is going to be right around 175. 
So since she was at 2050 before 2060, 2050, I'm going to go ahead and go a quarter below and a quarter above what I think her final answer is going to be, and that will allow me to bracket it. So for young people like Jennifer, you have to make sure that they're not over minus, and this is the main way that you check for whether your patients are over minus or not. So I would go ahead, if she was a low vision patient, I would assume that she would still about see like 20, that she'd be, well, we changed her still by a lot, but I would be assuming that she's still about see like 2060. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and check her vision again. Um, can you read that bottom line there? F or would it be clear? F C B D E. Okay. And then what's the, oop, I did the wrong one. Uh, I'll never get mad at you guys for not knowing how to use these again. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, so now what's the last line you can read out there? Um, I would say S P B U E H. Okay, so she can actually read 2020 um, because she's not low vision, right? Um, but anyway, so looking out here, I would check which one is more clear with one or with two. So now I have a total change of a half diopter, one or two. And then if she says about the same, then I know that she's over minus, right? So if she says it's the same with a quarter diopter more versus a, uh, a half or a quarter less, then I know that she's probably a little bit over minus. Sorry, did you want me to look at the top? Oh, uh, we actually just have you look at the one right above the one that's the best you can read. Okay, all right. Yep, sorry about that. No, you're fine. So you do one line above their best corrected vision, or their best vision of what they like either just got or what you think that they're going to get if you're not going to change it a whole lot. Like if, let's say you did sell and you didn't change anything much, you would just do one above whatever um, their vision was before. So more clear with one or with two or about the same. And there's one. And there's two. Pretty close. Pretty close. Okay. Yeah. So then now you would check with a 150 because we still think the final answer is going to be a 175. And let's see if I've got one that's not. Uh, I don't have one that's not terrible. You guys will see me do the cardinal sound just cleaning out my shirt probably. But hey, shirts are better than tissues. <laughs> so I'll try to make this like slightly cleaner so that she can maybe see through it. Okay. Cotton shirts are better than tissues. I should clarify. Okay, <laughs> so looking out there again, is it more clear with one or two? One's a little better. One. Okay, great. And then now, also, since you can see 2020, I would just check with or without, because that should be a just noticeable difference with or without. Uh, About really the same. Close, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I could just see if she saw extra lines with adding it in. Um, you can check like 2015 and see if you wanted to add that quarter in. But that's really all there is to it. Um...